Hi friends, this is Charity from Group Publishing. Today, we're going to discover that Jesus' power takes action. By that, I mean action on our part. To get started, let's talk about God sightings. How did you see God at work this week? Now, my God sighting is being able to go to my brother's church. I was able to watch the service online. He played guitar and led some worship songs, including one of my favorites. Now, we live in different places, so we don't usually get to go to church together. But friends, God is at work through the church. Not the buildings, but the people. Now it's your turn. Pause the video and give each person a chance to share their God sighting from this past week. Then, while you're at it, why don't you grab your supplies? Today, you're going to need a sheet of paper, a pen or marker or something to write with, and a Bible if you want to follow along. Those are really the only supplies you need today. So are you ready? Set God sightings. Thank you for sharing. I love watching for God. And I also love exploring God's amazing story with you. Today's Bible story comes from the book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. You can read it all later if you want. The story starts in Jerusalem, near a place called the Pool of Bethesda. Now, this pool had hundreds of people who were sick, lying nearby, waiting for healing. Now, when I picture that, it, it makes me kind of sad. All of those people needed Jesus' power. Hmm, how can we experience this story together? I have an idea. Why don't you all lie down? <laughs> Really, go ahead, everyone, and lie down on the floor, and I'll wait for you. It doesn't matter if you're in your kitchen or your living room. Everybody, just lie down on the floor. I'm not going to lie down or else you won't see me anymore. <laughs> but are you comfy? Oh, good, good. I'm so glad. Because you need to lie just like that. Well, I tell you what happened in the story. No moving, okay? You promise? No moving until I tell you to. Okay. Well, the people lying by the pool, they weren't so comfy because they were all really sick. The Bible says that some were blind, some couldn't walk, and some were paralyzed. That means that they couldn't move at all. Oh, what's that? You have a question. Oh, ah, oh, yes. You are wondering why they were lying by this particular pool. Well, friends, I am glad that you ask. You see, they believed that every so often an angel of the Lord would come and stir up the water. And the first person to get into the pool after the water swirled would be healed. Healed! So they lay there and they waited. And waited. And waited. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of think that waiting is no fun. And I like to do something when I wait. So, um... Why don't you, without moving, do uh, jumping jacks while you wait? Without getting up, no moving around. Uh, yeah, that's not really gonna work for you right now, is it? Because you can't move. You promised. It's kind of frustrating, huh? Well, one day, Jesus was walking by the pool, and he saw one particular man lying there. 
Now, Jesus knew that this man had been sick for 38 years. 38 years! Ew! That's just a few years older than me. <laughs> and maybe some of your parents, too. He was sick for almost my whole life. That is a long time to be sick. And this man, he couldn't walk. He really needed Jesus' help. So Jesus asked the man, would you like to get well? <laughs> and the man answered, I can't, sir, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone always gets there ahead of me. <sighs> Let's think about this conversation. Jesus, he asked a question, and the man said, I can't. You know, friends, I seem to hear myself saying, I can't a lot lately. With the COVID-19 situation, I can't travel. I can't go to the movies with my friends. I can't even throw my friend a birthday party. Hmm. I wonder, what are some of the things that you can't do during this coronavirus situation? Now, since you all can't get up right now, you're still lying there, right? <laughs> right, so you can't pause me. So instead of pausing the video, quickly, everyone call out some things that you can't do right now. Shout them out now. What's that? No school? No playing with friends? No going to work? Oh, yep, we all seem to be limited by what we can't do right now. But let's get back to the Bible story. So here's the man lying near the pool with no one to help him get in the water. Uh, let's have you try this again. So again, without moving, go to the kitchen sink and wash your hands. Then all your troubles will be over. Well, can't you do it? <laughs> of course not. You can't move. Now think of how frustrating that would feel for the man who just wanted to get in the pool. Then along comes Jesus, asking him if he wants to be healed. And instead of saying, yes, the man says, I can't. Thankfully, Jesus, he didn't leave it at that. He said, stand up pick up your mat and walk. And instantly the man was healed. So quick, everybody jump up. <laughs> the man, he rolled up his sleeping bag or his sleeping mat, not his sleeping bag. And he began to walk. Now, did you notice what happened? Jesus healed him, but the man had to take action too. So friends, you walk too. Stand on up with me and let's get moving. <laughs> Go ahead and march in place with me. <laughs> okay, now freeze. <laughs> let's talk about all of the things that we can do right now. So. With your family, you're going to pause the video and think about this question. What can you do right now? Maybe it's at home with your family. Uh, maybe you can write some letters to people who are in a nursing home. It's time for you to make an action plan and decide what you can do to help during this time. So I am guessing that you are going to come up with some great ideas. So what you need is your piece of paper, something to write with, and you're going to make your action plan. Just list all of the ideas that you come up with as a family. Are you ready? Set. Action. Action. 
Now those are some creative ideas. Way to go! Jesus' power takes action. He'll help you change I can'ts into I can's. Let's see another way that we can turn an I can't into an I can. Now you're going to need to stand up for this one again. We are going to try to balance on one foot and see if we can balance for 10 seconds. But here's the catch. As we try to balance, keep looking all around the room. Don't stop moving your head and looking around, okay? On your mark, get set, balance. One, two, <laughs> let's try again. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, it was really hard. It made me feel like I can't balance very well. But let me show you a little sciencey fun trick to balance better. So first, you're going to pick something at eye level to focus on. So I am going to focus at the camera. <laughs> it's like I'm focusing on you guys. Did you pick your thing? Got it. Now, stand on one foot and hold one earlobe between your thumb and finger. Focus on your object and let's see if we can balance. Can we get to 10? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We did it! Maybe you could have even stayed balanced for a lot longer. I think I could have. You see, when we focused on one thing, it was easier to balance. And friends, when we focus on Jesus, his power helps us stand strong. And it's cool that our ears help us balance too, right? That reminds us to listen for what Jesus is asking us to do. So we just turned another I can't into an I can. Let's celebrate with a song about serving God and letting our lights shine. Would you sing with me? You guys stomp your feet like that? Now let's clap together. That's it. Clapping on the back beat. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.
<laughs> what a fun song. Thank you for singing. Now, before we close, let's play a quick game to help us remember that Jesus' power takes action. Get ready, it's gonna be action-packed. So, do you remember how in our Bible story, the first person to get into the pool would be healed? Well, in this game, I will call out an object, and you will try to be the first one in your family to touch that object. Now, I'll tell you a certain way to move, too. And friends, <laughs> remember to play nice. I can't have this turning into a family fight. That would not be good. Are you ready? Okay, our first object that I will call out and tell you how to move to is walk to a window. <laughs> Who's going to get there first? Awesome! Well done! Okay, your next assignment. Everybody together? Crawl to a wall. Go! <laughs> oh, nice crawling. Well done. Okay, here's the next action. Everybody back together with your family. Hop on one foot to a light switch. Go! <laughs> now turn the lights back on. Good job. Come on back together. Here is your next one. This might be a little further depending on what room you're in. You are going to skip to a spoon, like what you eat with. Go! Skip! Skip, skip to the spoon. <laughs> Are you there yet? Awesome. All right, here is your last challenge. Everybody back together as a family. So you all start at the same place. Your last assignment is to power walk to water from a faucet. Go. Let's give everybody a cheer. How fun was that? Come on back. Oh, way to play. You know, in our game, the goal was to be the first to touch an object. And the last object was water. That reminds me of how in our Bible story, the sick man wanted to be first in the pool. But he said he couldn't. So let's wrap this up by thinking of ways that your family members have taken action for each other. So maybe you helped your mom make dinner yesterday. Or maybe a brother helped you with your math homework. Go ahead around your family and each person say at least one way that a family member has taken action recently. So go ahead and share that now. And let's start with the oldest person in the room. How have you taken action to help each other? Pause me and talk about that now. Oh, friends, I am so glad that Jesus' power takes action and that Jesus is always there to help us. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm just not sure what to do. But we can always pray and we can talk with Jesus and ask him to help us know. So let's pray and talk to Jesus right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us and helping us take action. I thank you for each family who's watching this video right now. 
And Jesus, I thank, that you, I thank you that you are with people who are sick right now. May they know your love, and would you please heal and help them get better? Thank you, Jesus, that you are always with us. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you um, for being with us today. And speaking of thanks, <laughs> my thankful journal. So this week, you can draw a picture of something that you are thankful that you can do right now. Uh, be sure to put today's date on your picture so that you can look back and remember how you served and helped people and shared Jesus' love. So get ready to take action and draw when this video is over. And friends, don't forget God sightings too. Where do you see God at work? I cannot wait to share evidence of God at work with you next week. So I'll see you then. And remember, Jesus' power takes 